Hello everybody, it's Thursday evening. I'm coming up for my daily exercise once again. Now, not every day we will be doing shoe off tests, trying to do time trials, striving for Strava segments. Some days you just like to run easy. So the problem with that, of course, is that running through your door day after day just becomes a bit boring. So recently I got introduced to a fairly new, well new to me site called citystrides.com. The idea of that is to run all the streets in your area, which is basically run as many as you can. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to try and see if I can find some new to me streets. I've done so many now that I've actually kind of got to run about two, two and a half miles before we even get to one new. So I'm going to show you a little introduction to the website. And then when I get to the street aiming to run for, we'll uh, have another look in and see how we go. OK, see you later then. Bye. Hello, so I thought you'd give it a little introduction to the City Strides website. So I've already signed up, but I've signed out, so I can show you logging in. So if we sign in, we can authenticate with uh, one of these apps. So I'll choose uh, Strava, and we just authorised Strava to allow City Strides to see our activities. So here we go, I've already got all my uh, data from the last 16 years back to 2004 when I first got the first Forerunner 201. A rather brick but uh, rather a game changer of its time so you get an overview of your recent activities i actually sync mine now to garmin i'll show you that a bit later so let's have a look at my life map this is basically the heat map of all the roads and places i've run on so by default it shows you a view of your local area now i live in a place called claygate in surrey uh, to the southwest of london so also you can see most of my running is around here and all these sort of places you can hover over an activity and see when you actually run it. So that was on first run it for the first time that is. 13th of September 2015 I did that particular one. If I click on that it actually opens up a view of the actual run. I think that was by chance that was a run I did when I was coming back from a holiday and I must have explored some areas here I don't normally go on. Now the idea is that you're meant to fill in all the roads so bike rides or journeys in the car don't count. They must be marked as a run. So strictly speaking, this is all on foot. There's a little thing called the Node Hunter that you can click here, and it shows you in red all the places that you haven't actually run on yet. Now there's a few issues that they need to resolve. Things like running down the A3 trunk road, obviously it isn't desirable. So that's in hand to remove activities like that. If I drill down a bit more, and then you can see odd pockets of roads in my village of Claygate that I haven't actually run down. That's the reason for that is that this is a, a private gated road. So again, you can go into the open street map and mark it as private, and they've got work in progress to have a constant synchronization between the two. So for now, I can either sort of hope that the gates will open, or I can manually mark that as done. Also of interest for me as a track runner is all the tracks I've run on. You can see that little oval there and that one there. Those are actually uh, grass tracks um, on school fields. So in the summer, uh, sometimes you can luckily just run around a few laps, but I've never really done any formal sessions around there. So moving across a bit, this is Stomp on Lane in Walton, where my club's track was, uh, which has now been demolished and replaced by houses a few years ago. And our new track here is at the XL Leisure Centre, well, adjacent to it. For a few months, a few summers ago, we used the track at St George's College in Adelston, which is that one there. So if I pan out of it to more the south of England, you can see I've done an awful lot of running in the, in the environments of Surrey and Hampshire here, largely sort of aligned to the A3 through Guildford onto Hazelmere area down here, and all sorts of random visits to country lanes round and about. Maybe some for park runs, some not. And it's interesting to see areas that you haven't uh, run on yet. So Upton Grey and Long Sutton is obviously two areas that I may need to take a visit to to fill in that little gap there. And you can perhaps see why I get quite a few course records in Strava because I can visit these places that not many people go to and uh, pick up some uh, low-hanging fruit, as, a, as we call it. We've also got a beach at Haley Island that we go to regularly. So I've covered most of Haley Island, at least the west side of it, uh, where our beach hut is. A bit of Portsmouth when we did the 10 mile Great South run and a few odd runs when I got the ferry over between the two gaps there. Probably little runs on the, on the train from Haven, running the rest of the way or getting off a, further up at Petersfield. 
So how do you get data into? This is the settings page. There's four options. And the recommended one now is the Garmin one that they've recently introduced. So I've already got my Garmin as my central point. So when I go out for my runs, I'm using the 945 and the 245M at the moment. And 945 is my primary one. So that goes into Garmin and then it comes out to Strava and uh, now here as well. Now, previously, I did a bit of a fudge where I let, found an app called the Run Gap app, which is a really nice app. Where you can synchronize all your activities for different services. So I've synchronized all my activities from Strava into map my run and I can import it from there. The reason for that is that the Strava service is a bit overloaded so they highly recommend that you use one of these other ones and Garmin seems to be improving pretty good so as soon as your run is done you can it appears in here pretty much straight away whereas it used to be a bit of a, a wait with Strava. I could have also done my full run history sync from Garmin now using this button. It is a bit like Strava in terms of it is a fundamentally a free service with an optional supporter rate. So I paid looks like near five dollars a month for a couple of months to give it a try. And then you do get some benefits with the paid for. I think you get your life map is able to be displayed much more quickly, and you get priority with the synchronization. And so I think it's certainly worth it. And in terms of finding an extra challenge to me on different days. So if we look at my profile page, we can see that the areas that I've run the most are in Olio in Faro in Portugal. That's because we've actually got a place there and uh, there's not actually that many streets in that little city, only 191. So it looks like I've covered more than half of them. So if we take where I actually live in Elmbridge. So having clicked on the Elmbridge link, we now get a view of the, uh, the Elmbridge streets and this obviously this blue solid line defines the, the boundary of Elmbridge. So I live to the sort of the east side in Claygate. So obviously I've covered most of that and then there is into Leatherhead where I work, well, <laughs> in normal times. And uh, but done much far less actually in Weybridge, Walton and Malmsey. So that's why I've got all these streets over here to look at. So you also get some extra tabs. You can see a view of all the streets that you haven't you've done a few bits of but haven't actually finished. So if I click on one at random here, Abbott's Tilt. So we can show that one and there we go. It's here. So we've got a couple of nodes there to do. Okay, so that's next to uh, Hersham Station leading into uh, the golf course there. And I think it's Hersham Golf Course. So I've been past it many times, but never actually nipped into that fit, fit, do that um, little street there. Also, you've got a list of the ones you can uh, complete on a similar view. And uh, you can also see what other st uh, city striders are here and sort of like you get a leaderboard of how many's done what. So I seem to be in the lead at 31%. It's probably reflecting the fact that this is quite a new thing. Not many people have yet signed up. So there's a few other people that have done less. I think I actually know Richard McChase. He's a regular park runner in Houghton in the Park Run Forum. So he's actually done more streets than me overall, just over 5,000 to my just over 4,000. And you can also look at people's life maps as well if they've set their privacy um, to allow that. So if we pan out and look at the whole of the UK, I've obviously done most of my running in the sort of the shires of the south here in Surrey, Hampshire, Dorset, a bit into Norfolk when I've been on the holiday, quite a lot in Milton Keynes area where I was going to go to my physio up there, a few trips to Devon and Cornwall for holidays. Um, I remember a work trip to Wakefield one time. Uh, another one to York, I remember, and then uh, we did. I did the red car uh, park run with my friend Ian one time. So that's that run up that coast there. I also did the Keswick park run, so that's that little bit there. And then on the same trip, um, we were staying in Kendal, so I got the bus out to Grasmere and ran in the Lake District back along to Kendal. So that's that big line there. I also like running on our railway, so I can actually see a lot of the old railways I've run on. So there's one that goes through East Grinstead that Speeching actually lived on and effectively closed his own line. There's another one, like the Cuckoo Trail, down from Heathfield down towards Eastbourne. And then there's the Downs Link that goes from Guildford all the way down to Shoreham and the south coast. I've done a few old railways lines on the Isle of Wight by the looks of it. Haley Island where we've got the beach up, and there's also another old line on there. Also in Dorset, you've got the Castleman Corkscrew that goes from sort of Paul area through Wimborne through Ringwood. So I can see that sort of curve there. And also another railway rail line that goes through Blandford and off to Sturminston Newton, where I've also done the park run. And then another one through Marlborough, Lugershaw, and off towards Swindon. Like another one there at Cricklate. <laughs> another one there at Congresbury near 
Chris, all these random appearances in the middle of nowhere seem to be to run on our rubber lines. I think I've got another one up here in the Bishop Scorford as well. Whitstable out there, that was for a part one. Also, that was also a bit of old railway down that way. We've got some relatives that live in Hastings and also Eastbourne. Roy must have been another trip when I was visiting Hastings. So in terms of what actually is the nearest road that I haven't actually done apart from these odd private ones, well, I think it looks like it's over this way towards Sandown Park here. So I might actually run over there later and show you running and running around this road. There's a road there called Parkwood Avenue and Douglas Road. That leads off to where Sigma Sport have their warehouse. You can go and collect stuff. So you can drill down on this bit. And if you then reapply the node hunter, you can see all these ones that I've got to do. So, I hope you found that uh, interesting. I think I'll head off now and uh, see if I can go over to that Sandown Park area and fill in a few more roads um, tonight. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hello, so I've run 2.2 miles from home to a road called Parkwood Avenue here behind me, which is quite near the back of each station. So. This is a road I haven't yet run on. Oh, there's no app for City Strides. The uh, Safari browser on my iPhone works great because with the inbuilt GPS, you can just home in exactly where you are. And with your life map, you can sort of zoom in on the place where you are and see what roads you need to do if you get a bit lost. So I'm going to run down here now and complete these ones and uh, we'll see you later. Okay, right, I've just finished those uh, roads. I'll have a quick look at my Garmin on the 945 here you can see that the weight's been readied in so that's a good way of seeing what I've done. So I hope you found that interesting and I look forward to seeing the next one. Okay bye!